I welcome for the last little session, but last but not least, uh, you know, we're going to have a few uh, words by our provost, soon to be president. I've been, I've been doing that the whole day. Uh, Regional De Roche. And I'm really happy for, for him to come here and to also share his vision and what is important with this conference. So thank you for being with us. And again, if I don't see you later, please come back tomorrow. Great. Thank you very much. Am I in the right spot here? Yes. Great. Thank you very much. I want to thank uh, Jackie, Professor Todd Wolf, and uh, uh, Professor Duno Gutberg, obviously, from here. Um, anyway, thank you for organizing such an incredibly important uh, gathering of the minds and what may be, in my opinion, one of the most important issues of our time the increasing, increasing frequency and impact of natural disasters, and what that means for the future of the area where the Gulf Coast region. Uh, rarely do I see a conference that brings together diverse experts, people, I'm an engineer, I may be the only engineer here today, but I've seen scientists, humanists, social scientists, artists, and uh, it's rare to see such an eclectic and uh, impressive gathering of people to talk about natural disasters. I spent most of my career studying natural disasters, mainly from an engineering perspective and primarily earthquakes. Uh, I was a student at Berkeley in 1989 when the bubble created earthquake hit. Uh, during that famous baseball game at 504. Um, for me, it sparked a major interest in being a, a structural engineer focused on disaster resilience. I spent the next eight years uh, working on two degrees from Berkeley, a master's and a PhD, focused on earthquake design, earthquake resilient design. Then I spent the next 20, roughly 20 years, teaching and doing research on mitigating uh, natural disasters at Georgia Tech. There are two events that have had a profound impact on how I view natural disasters. First was the 2005 Hurricane Katrina, which resulted in uh, over 1,800 fatalities, $120 billion in damage. I subsequently led a team down to the New Orleans area to look at the port of New Orleans and some of the main bridges in the Gulf area that were that had collapsed in that region. And then the 2010 Haiti earthquake which is the deadliest natural disaster in the Western Hemisphere with over a quarter of a million dead, likely more than that. Um, and uh, I traveled to Haiti over 10 times since that earthquake uh, in, in the following years to, uh, for a variety of projects focused, focused on the recovery and response from the earthquake. Um, both events made me realize that what happens during a natural disaster is not just a failure of the built environment, it's actually a failure of or shortcomings in the built environment, uh, the natural environment, and the social systems that support them. To try to build truly resilient communities, you have to address all three stools of the complex system that is the communities that we live in. Uh, there is no doubt that failure of brittle concrete and weak steel fed, uh, led to the failures in buildings in Haiti, which led people to die at an unimaginable rate. And again, 250,000, perhaps more, died in Haiti. However, I believe that the seeds of disaster were planted in Haiti over 200 years before that, when Haiti did the unthinkable uh, and led a successful insurrection by self-liberated slaves. The resulting Haiti history of Haiti and the response from the international community in large part resulted in the people that exist in Haiti to this day and why so many people died. I strongly believe that. I can't think of a better place to study natural disasters than Houston. It is one of the largest and most diverse cities in the U.S. and sits in a location that is at the heart of challenges that will face us in the coming decades. Uh, increasing intensity and frequency of storm, sea level rise, and many other things. Rice has the expertise across the breadth of the university from engineering and, social, and science to social science, architecture, and humanities to bring the bear uh, on these challenges in this space. Let me just mention a few programs that we're doing at Rice that really have me excited about uh, the future of us by the region for open space. We recently uh, were announced as a founding member of the Gulf, the Gulf Scholars Program, which will inspire and prepare undergraduate students to address challenges of resilience to natural hazards and climate stressors facing urban and industrial communities in the Gulf region. They'll build a team of diverse scholars that have technical skills, contextual sensitivity, and leadership ability across uh, to address grand challenges 
a further resilience to climate adaptation in the Gulf Coast region. The students will be recruited, mentored, and trained through a diverse set of co-curricular and curricular activities uh, for undergraduate scholars at Rice that cut across all disciplines, uh, including the humanities. We are truly excited about the possibilities with the Grant Scholars Program. Rice is also hosting the Society of Environmental Journalists Conference, I think, in the spring. Uh, bringing uh, hundreds of environmental journalists and experts in the region to the Gulf Coast area so we're excited to host that. So that's just a few of the things we're working on at Rice in this space. I'm excited uh, uh, to have been a part of this over the past few years in our role first as dean, and then as provost, and then uh, about seven months with <laughs> Kathy. Uh, hopefully, we'll lead our uh, efforts in this space as president of the university. So, again, I want to thank you for having me here today. Thank you for spending your day. It sounds like you're spending your day tomorrow. Uh, and uh, again, if there, in my opinion, there's no more important topic to our future, and certainly the Gulf Coast and what you're working on. So, thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Everyone, we see you. It was short but powerful and sweet. Uh, so we'll see you all tomorrow and thank you for both who followed us uh, during the whole day and tomorrow there's more things to come. Enjoy the rest of your evening or morning, wherever you are. And it was a pleasure uh, to share our space with you. Thank you.